So I have a wild hair up my ass that can't be plucked because in regards to her rap career, Remy Ma didn't have much luck. Let's discuss. What's up y'all, it's your boy Beasley here. Hope you all are staying cool, calm and collected out there. Happy New Year. I'm coming at you guys uh, fresh from the pits of hell. Uh, I was under a little bit of a depression spell, but I'm back and I'm alive and well. And I feel like 2022 is gonna be a very prosperous year for me. Like, I just feel it. I feel it in my heart. But today, I wanna talk to you guys about the New York battle rapper by the name of Remy Ma. Before I get into the nitty gritty, y'all, I am a bird for New Yorkers, specifically New York men. Like, I just love just, just the hardness, the, the greediness, the, the huh in the voice. Like, it's just, New Yorkers, y'all are just straightforward, blunt, and don't give an F. Like, y'all are just hard to the core. I, man, I, ugh. I love New York men that rock snapbacks and Tims. Talk to them nicer, they'll cut up your limbs. <laughs> Y'all, I just love New Yorkers. But if you guys have been living under a rock or don't pay much attention to the females in hip hop, Remy Ma was born in the boogie down Bronx of New York in the 1980s. I think actually 1980. She was born into a family that had like drug abuse issues, but she took that pain that she grew up with and she was like a poet. In the Bronx, she was known as just a hardcore poet. You know, she ended up meeting up with Big Pun. Big Pun was a big rapper back in the 80s and the 90s. And he heard her freestyle and ever since then, he took her under her wing and became her mentor. But in the mid to late 90s, after Big Pun passed away, uh, Fat Joe, who was his best friend, also took Remy Ma under his wing and signed her to Terror Squad, which was underneath Universal Records. So back in 2006, she came out with her first and only solo album that had hit singles like Conceited, uh, I love Conceited, y'all. I used to jam that song on a daily basis back in the day. And her other song, Whatever, which was like a lesser known hit. But for the most part, her first album was a critical success, especially like in the New York rap scene. Like New York was really taking over back in the early 2000s, but it was a financial flop, mainly due to a very huge lack of promotion from Universal and Terror Squad. And a lot of people don't know this, but this actually led to Fat Joe and Remy Ma falling out. Like they weren't friends for years after like the disappointment pointing sales of her first album. After she left Terror Squad, she went solo for a little bit, independent basically, and a lot of people don't know this, before she went to jail, she was actually going to form a rap trio group with other rap female rappers by the name of Shauna and Miss Jackie O. But that all came to a head when she ended up going to jail. She went to jail for basically shooting her friend over a stack. I mean, per her words, she said it didn't really go down like that, but at the end of the day, Remy Ma, you shot somebody. And you know, the sad thing is, before going to jail, this was like before Nicki Minaj like rose to prominence, and this was like around the time that Lil' Kim's career was on the decline. Remy Ma was really being propped up to be the next big act in female hip-hop. Like, I always say this, that had she had not went to jail, Remy Ma would have been big. Like, very big. And this is off topic, but it's sad that like a lot of the other rap girls at the time didn't get a chance to really step up to the plate due to their own issues with their management team and um, their record labels like Shauna and Jackie O. Jackie O kind of like went to the wayside because she didn't like that she's rapping about a lot of sexual BS and had to like kind of face that with her fans. And Shauna had issues with Ludacris at the time and Ludacris low key blackballed her. But anyways, this video is about Remy Ma. But after she got out of jail, things were kind of looking up because she landed her first job out of jail, which was on Love and Hip Hop. And she also reunited with Fat Joe and in my opinion, y'all, now I know her and Fat Joe are best friends, they're like brother and sister, but I feel like Fat Joe used her for his comeback because Fat Joe was not popping like that at all until he came, until Remy Ma came back out of jail. That's just my opinion. Like, nobody was really checking for Fat Joe since Lean Back. And this is coming from a real fan of Fat Joe. I love Fat Joe. I low key have a crush on Fat Joe's big ass. But Remy Ma was on Love and Hip Hop with the love of her life, Pat Poose. Pat Poose, such a good man. Like, when you see two people that are made for each other, it is Remy Ma and Pat Poose. But I will say, now this is off topic again. You guys you guys know I like to ramble. Um, Pat Poose, I've said this before, that man is such an amazing rapper, but his songs just are not good. Like, it's just like, 
it's like he's too good for the beats that he picks. Like, he, like he's too good for music, if that makes sense. Like, every time Pat Poos is on a song, like, he attacks the beat so hard that the beat just gives up, because he just overpowers everybody else that's in the song and the whole entire beat. Like, he just, like, he spits hot lava, basically. But it's just too good to where it just can't translate into commercial success. It's like he is forever going to be an underground artist and ghostwriter because he, he just goes too hard, if that makes sense. But on Love & Hip Hop, y'all, Remy Ma, in my opinion, was a little delusional. Now, she's been delusional about a lot of things, but she was like, she didn't take any form of accountability in her shooting that girl and why she went to jail. She kind of like put her problems on everybody else, including her family. I will say for the most part, in the beginning, Love & Hip Hop was a good look for her up until she got into it with um, um, that little troll by the name of Brie, uh, that female rapper that got into with Bianca Bonnie, Bianca Bonnie, the girl who sung Chicken Noodle Soup, Chicken Noodle Soup, Chicken Noodle Soup, with a soda on the side. <laughs> Y'all, I'm a loving hip hop historian, I can't help it. Now you guys, even if you didn't know Rumi Ma's whole entire rap career, you definitely knew that diss that she put out against Nicki Minaj by the name of Sheether. Now you guys, that, that was like one of the biggest diss tracks of all time, in my opinion. Like, it was better than Ether, in my opinion. Like, I mean, Ether was amazing, but Sheether, I felt like, was really, like, just like a huge diss. Like, that, that, that diss was just, that diss had everybody shook, y'all. Everybody. Including Nicki Minaj herself, the one that it was aimed at. Y'all, Sheether, that diss track, that was just so powerful and impactful. Like, it literally had the whole world shook. Like, it broke the internet. Like, Everybody, like Remy Ma was on everybody's lips, but unfortunately, that diss track ended her career because Nicki Minaj, now this is all alleged, but it's really plain as day to see that she was sabotaged behind the scenes because of it. Like, at that time, Nicki Minaj was still the industry darling. Like, this was before Cardi B became the industry favorite and rose to prominence. So everybody was still like Team Nicki in the industry, even though behind the scenes, uh, people were like secretly fed up with Nicki Minaj. But they were still going to bend to her will because she was the industry girl. And that really stopped a lot of bags and a lot of progress in Remy Ma's career. Like, I think a lot of um, recording studios wouldn't let her record. She got banned from TV shows, banned from certain brand deals. Like, Remy Ma's bag and her whole entire progress literally stopped after that diss track. But at the same time, you can't fully blame the decline in her career on Nicki Minaj because if you guys watch Love & Hip Hop, towards like the last season that she was on there, she pretty much gave up. Like she legit gave up on her career. Like she had a baby, she was going to the studio, but you could tell she did not want to do it. Like she simply did not want to do it anymore. And Fat Joe even had to like give her a pep talk, like girl, like you're in this whole entire record deal and like the math ain't mathin', like you're not producing anything. Like I wonder how her contract was and if she had to pay her way out of it because she legit wasted a lot of money in that contract, y'all. Like she was showing up to record, but it's like she just was not feeling it. Like something was missing. Like she just couldn't get her mojo back and she gave up. Like she was ready to just be like, basically like an Instagram model and a mom. Another reason why she gave up was because I want to say due to like the lack of fan support. Now, I will say for her to be a female rapper, she didn't really appeal to women. Like she appealed more to men, if that makes sense. Like not calling her masculine, but she was definitely like masculine identified. And especially when you listen to her interview, she's very, like she would, is the type of chick that will take the man's side almost 90%. Like she will always ride for the man. Like let's say she's talking about a um, issue because she was on a podcast, uh, the For the Culture podcast with Joe Budden and a few other people. Like let's say they were on that podcast talking about a domestic violence situation between a couple. She would always take the men's side of the situation, the men's side of the argument. Like she, like, she was a woman that was not pro-woman, if that makes sense. And that confused her having, like, a female fan base because majority of women support music. Like, I know there's a lot of men in hip-hop and music, but, like, majority of the support comes from women. And it's like, you make music for women, but you're not really pro-women. But you also have, like, a masculine identified persona, but you're not really catering your music to men either. So it kind of led to her having like a very confused fan base and the gays didn't go up for her either. I mean, I, I went up for her. Like I love Remy Ma's music, but 
<laughs> it's just like people weren't really vibing with her because they didn't know how to take her. And it's sad, colorism did come at play. I'm the colorism cop at this point, but colorism did come at play. Like, the industry... The industry shits on dark-skinned women. Like, we just gotta keep it real. They don't really uplift them. And they called her, like, masculine. They called her a gorilla. They, they did all that bullshit. And they even tried their best to soften up her image by putting her in, like, the latest fashions. She lost weight, allegedly got surgery. Tried to get that whole entire Instagram look and that Instagram, like, model persona going on. I mean, she looks gorgeous. Remy Ma is beautiful, in my humble opinion. But... That they, they tried their best to get her to appeal to certain demographics and it just didn't stick for her. And lastly, about a month ago, um, this is also further talking about her delusions. She said that a lot of female rappers don't want to collaborate with her because her pin game goes. And I'm just like, girl, no. Now granted, she can spit hot fire. Remy Ma is a, she's a battle rapper. That's another reason why she didn't really like translate well to the mainstream artists of rap because Let's keep it real, nobody cares about battle rap anymore. Like, I appreciate the art form, I love it, because I love old school New York rap. I love that greediness, all that, but mainstream people don't care about that, especially when coming from female rappers. They care about pussy popping in a handstand. That's what they want to hear from female rappers today. But Remy, the main reason that a lot of these female artists don't want to collaborate with you is because you gave up on your career. You gave up on rapping. Like, you settled for just being, like, in rowdy television and doing, like, hosting gigs. You even, like, lately hosted the Wendy Williams show. Ooh, girl. Wendy Williams, girl. That's another video. But, um... Yeah, Rimby, you gave up on your career and you haven't put out a song since Wake Me Up. Now, I love that song with Lil' Kim, Wake Me Up. Didn't like Lil' Kim's part. Lil' Kim sounded like... She sounded like an Atlanta scammer rapping. Like, I didn't like... Like, Lil' Kim didn't sound like herself. It was like she was trying to find a whole other identity. But that aside, I love the song. I love the beat. The, the um... They used the Mary J. Blige's I Can Love You uh, beat. I love that song and I love this take on it, this um, this sample that they use. But overall, for some reason, that song just didn't stick because, you know, a lot of people still did not know how to take Remy Ma. And it made other female artists not want to collaborate with you because, girl, you're not popping anymore. Like, Remy Ma, you had the chance to really blow up after you got out of jail, but you gave up. Like, you gave up after, like having a lot of doors closed because of that Sheetha record, but you could have kept going and going and putting out singles and really using love and hip-hop to drive your career, but you didn't do that. You just settled for being a reality star and letting other gigs fund your life, but I, I, I still root for you, Rumi Ma, if you decide to make a comeback, then come on back, girl, but you need to be serious about it because... Uh, we gotta keep it real, like, if you fell out of love with your own craft, you just fell out of love with it and you grew out of it, like, you wanna focus on being a mom and a wife and a celebrity guest host, that, just do that then, but don't sit there and say that these female artists don't wanna collaborate with you because you're a great writer, no girl, they don't wanna collaborate with you because you're not popping anymore. So what is next for Rumi Ma? Um, I really don't know, but I will say, I think she's still doing like the podcast thing with Fat Joe, like them, them two are like a dynamic duo, I do love them two together, but as far as like making music, I, I just don't know, like, Y'all answer this. Would you be here for a Remy Ma comeback? Would you support her music? Please let me know. Real talk, if they decide to do like, um, really all these New York rappers need to get together and do something similar to the Millennium Tour because New York rap, you know, with the rise of like G-Unit back in the early 2000s and, um, uh, Dipset, all of them, they could all get together and do a throwback New York tour. Remy Ma could be on that, and they could also put on Lil' Kim. Lil' Kim needs some money. We can get Foxy Brown if she's not in a mental institution. Um, who else? We can get um, Queen Latifah if she's not busy with her boo, but I, I, I don't know what you could do, Remy Ma. But I will say, Remy, if you decide to come back, like, I will support your girl. Like, I love all the girls. I, I love all the rap females, but... Yeah, y'all, just answer that question. Would you be here for a Remy Ma comeback? Who knows what she could do, but either way it goes, I'll support you, boo. <laughs> but those are my views, so be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'm gonna come back at you guys with some more content.